you. Well, let's bring in uh, to a conversation a man who I'm sure uh, remembers the name, Freni Jindwana, very, very well, KSAC Executive Secretary uh, Lawson Naidu as well, and talk about standing up for the Constitution and fighting for what should be, I think is how many people, Lawson, will remember the late Freni Jindwana. How are you feeling today? It must be a terrible loss for you. Uh, thank you, Gareth. It's uh, yeah, indeed a very, very sad, uh, sad day for for us that are close to uh, Comrade Freni, her family. Uh, it's a huge loss for the country. She played such a, an incredible role, both in the liberation uh, movement as well as in uh, uh, seeking to uh, uh, build South Africa's democracy. And she'll probably be best known as Madam Speaker as the Speaker of the first Democratic Parliament, which took the first steps towards creating uh, what she called a people's parliament, that this needed to be an institution that was open to all South Africans. Uh, but uh, she has accolades in, in so many different areas of her life. She achieved so much during the course of her, of her life on the global stage, uh, on the continent of Africa, as well as in South Africa. So she will be fondly remembered, and I think her legacy uh, is there for all of us to uh, to build upon and to, uh, and to strengthen. Uh, to build upon and to strengthen, but also to reflect back on, because I, I don't mean to give away my age at all, but as you said the words, Lawson, a people's parliament, I was quite young when I first heard those words uttered, sitting with my parents in the lounge, watching Freni Janwala in parliament. And it was, it was a, a, her ability to be gentle within parliament, but so incredibly stern at the same time. Some would argue we haven't seen that kind of control in Parliament since her days. She had a, a certain way about her, didn't she? Certainly did. I mean, uh, you know, I recall having worked very closely with her in that uh, first Democratic Parliament in 94, uh, that she had the uh, utmost respect from all uh, corners of Parliament, from all the political parties. Uh, she was uh, tough, she was firm, uh, but she was fair. And she had that respect from all of the political parties. And I think uh, you know, that is something that uh, is part of a legacy, uh, part of uh, taking Parliament to the people was the slogan that we used in the 1990s when we started that process. And, you know, there were many challenges that we faced uh, to uh, democratise and transform that Parliament, to make it into a people's Parliament, alongside the huge legislative uh, workload that that Parliament had, uh, passing many, many bills to overturn the, uh, the legacy of the apartheid and build the foundations of a new democratic South Africa, which would be able to realize the vision of the constitution, in which she also played a very significant role. Those stepping stones of gender equality as well, I know was uh, something very, very close to Freni uh, Genwala's heart as well. And it wasn't just talk, was it, Lawson? Also taking those uh, foundational stones and yeah. actually putting them in place for everyone else to walk across on. Well, she was, a, she, was, she was a gender rights activist in the full sense of the word uh, in South Africa, on the global stage, uh, within the African National Congress, uh, making sure that issues of gender equality uh, of uh, uh, it, it, true emancipation for all women in South Africa was always placed high on uh, the list of policy priorities for the Ash African National Congress, uh, the movement to which she dedicated her whole life. This must have been interesting. I'm going to ask you for some uh, behind the scenes here. Obviously, uh, the doctor uh, was also a journalist as well. And uh, you, it, it's a, always a very tricky scenario when you have someone involved in politics but also has a journalism background. They know how to, how to frame their answers. They know what we're going to ask. What was that like back in the day when asked the difficult questions? That must have been fun to watch. Yeah, well, she was, you know, she, she enjoyed uh, uh, her relationship with the media and she never forgot her roots as a journalist herself um, uh, in, in the UK, in exile, in Africa, in Tanzania, where she edited the standard newspaper at the request of Julius Nyerere, uh, the former president. Um, and she had a very easy relationship with the media, and, you know, uh, understood the role that the media had to play, the importance of a, a vibrant media in a democracy, and was always willing to entertain the difficult questions. Uh, and engage uh, with journalists. And, uh, you know, she uh, she recognized that uh, the media were there uh, to play a role and that they could play a very constructive role in building the foundations of the new South Africa uh, on which she spent, uh, 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 you know, those early years after 1994. It's so sad uh, that we need to ask this question, but now with uh, the very, very sad passing of, of the good doctor, uh, where does the youth look back on her role 
and, and try and remember that. Because now it's going to be up to the likes of you, Lawson Naidu. It's going to be up to uh, those who are elder members within Parliament, for example, to try and carry that torch forward. W where do we try and help the youth to remember just how important Dr. Jinwala was? Well, I think this is an opportunity uh, which we will undoubtedly do over the next few days and weeks to reflect on her legacy, on, on the role that she played, uh, what she really stood for, for constitutionalism, for social justice, for equality for all, uh, and, and to use, and for Parliament to play its role um, in, in passing the legislation to improve the quality of life for people, to ensuring that the executive is held to account uh, appropriately in Parliament. And I think as we learn those lessons from, uh, from her decades of selfless sacrifice, there are many lessons for all of us um, that you carry forward uh, to, to continue the work that she was so passionately uh, involved in. And, you know, right up until the very end, uh, she was uh, an avid follower of what was happening in the country, like many people of her generation, stalwarts of the African National Congress, uh, we're, we're somewhat despondent about the direction in which the country is, is traversing just now. But she remained uh, optimistic right until the very end that things could and would be turned around and, uh, and that the, uh, the dream and the vision of our constitution would ultimately be realized. I don't know if this comes across as an unfair question. Tell me if it does, but I'm keen to get your thoughts, Lawson, as well, is when you look at uh, Fanny Janwala and the People's Parliament, the first Speaker of Parliament uh, back in the day. Do you think it was a harder job back then than it is today? But today we have all the media attention and social media. Back then we didn't have it, of course, but you were dealing with a brand new democracy. Can you do a comparison? I think it's difficult to do a comparison. The challenges that we faced at the time in, the, in that 1994 Parliament in particular uh, were, were the challenges of taking over an institution that was uh, built under the apartheid system. And we had to transform that institution um, uh, to, to make it serve the interests of a, uh, of a democratic dispensation, to realize the vision of the Constitution, uh, to get people to understand. Uh, you know, I recall from the early days getting the parliamentary staff to understand what democratizing parliament meant and what steps needed to be taken to, for that to happen. And those were some difficult conversations that we had to have at the time. Uh, but ultimately, you know, Fernie, through the force of her personality, was able to prevail to convince people of the need to, uh, for change and that change needed to be fundamental and not just uh, cosmetic.